this again shows that they're panicked. They don't know what they're doing. They're flipping different things off and on like light switches where they used to very carefully dial things up and down. It's been about nine months now that I've been saying the Fed is going to break something here. Well, they did. They broke, you know, Sil uh, Silvergate, Signature, Silicon Valley, Credit Suisse. It's these crazy rate changes that have done it. And then you look at the box that the Federal Reserve is in. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, global storage options, and phenomenal customer service. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your bullion dealer. Hi everyone, this is a continuation of yesterday's video about the global financial crisis that is unfolding and how the big banks, the Federal Reserve is assisting all of the big banks in gobbling up the small banks. So uh, this chart that was provided by Edward Dowd here on a tweet, uh, it doesn't say, who made it, hopefully Edward did, but uh, um, this shows the 2008 global financial crisis and how it took until basically the end of 2012 to sort of unwind. It actually went even further than that, but it had a tail to it. And if you take a look at you know the size of the Washington Mutual, that was the biggest bank failure in history. Now Lehman was far, far larger, but Lehman was not a bank, so it's not on here. And it did fail. I mean, went into bankruptcy and vanished. But there you have uh, IndyMac Bank, which is also countrywide. So this is the one that sort of kicked everything off. Washington Mutual, I guess, I guess uh, the dates are lined up on the center of the circles. And Washington Mutual was after uh, IndyMac slash countrywide. But you can see how this progressed with all of these small banks and what we've had so far. We've, you know, Signature, Silicon Valley, First Republic. Uh, and if you put Credit Suisse in the mix, because Credit Suisse was just like a day or two from failing before they were acquired by UBS uh, with the Swiss government uh, doing guarantees uh, and, and providing the deal to UBS to gobble up Credit Suisse, one of the, but that bank, this is 229 billion. Uh, Credit Suisse was 1.75 trillion at their peak and uh, 1.4 trillion when they got acquired. So it would be a circle uh, bigger than all of these, bigger, you know, as big as these put together. Uh, and then you can stack these on top of that. And you're already, you know, up off the top of the chart here as far as the 2008 crisis goes. And so today, the Federal Reserve raised rates again by a quarter point. So this is their FOMC statement. So they went from five to five and a quarter percent right here. Uh, and then the first article that came out on it was Wall Street Journal, uh, that they raised rates a quarter point, but they also signaled a potential pause, that this might be it. Uh, which is good, but it's, I'm going to show you, it's still too late. They're uh, at 5.25. They will continue to break things. Uh, the uh, Zero Hedge article uh, hikes, you know, Fed hikes 25 basis points as expected. He signals hawkish pause, warns of tighter credit standards. I thought a pause is dovish, but anyway. Recent developments are likely to result in tighter credit conditions uh, was removed and replaced with tighter credit conditions. Uh, this is in there in the Fed's statement. They modified at the bottom of this article. It shows how the uh, Fed's statement was modified at the last second. The decision was unanimous. Uh, and this chart here sort of tells it all that, you know, we're up to the point where the markets went into a crisis back, you know, we raised rates uh, up to 5.25%. And that is when <laughs> the global financial crisis started. That's when they broke the entire real estate sector and all of the mortgage backed securities. So the Fed caused this crisis and, and broke things, but the Fed uh, created the, uh, the fundamental situation for the crisis by Greenspan taking rates down too low and keeping them there 
way too long. So uh, when we take a look at some of the uh, charts on the Federal Reserve's website that show whether or not a crisis is happening, you know, I, I've, I've had these charts up for a while. Um, I've been uh, looking at them. They're going to be um, uh, updated probably tonight. Um, some of them, when they say as of Wednesday, this was April 27th, so this is the following Wednesday, but they haven't been updated as yet. But anyway, this is repurchase agreements. And you can see that the Fed used to intervene in the repurchase agreement market. This is a market that the banks, uh, where the banks are all lending to each other. And what happens is when a bank needs cash, they will pledge a, uh, a, a U.S. Treasury or some other asset, if it's the Federal Reserve buying it, it's got to be a U.S. Treasury or a mortgage-backed security. It's got to be something that's backed by uh, your future taxation or your mortgage payment, something where the government has guaranteed it. Uh, and uh, so th this is the banks needing cash and then the Federal Reserve providing cash during the global financial crisis here. So this ramps up in March of 2008, you see this, uh, we're gonna get to what happened in March of 2008, and then they just shut it off. And then there was a liquidity crisis in the banking sector uh, back in uh, 2019, late 2019, and they switched this on. And it, this again shows that they're panicked, they don't know what they're doing, they're flipping different things off and on like light switches, where they used to very carefully dial things up and down. And so, and then the pandemic, and it hit this high of, uh, you know, getting close to a half trillion dollars uh, that the banks needed short-term loans on. And then Silicon Valley Bank right here, uh, they turned it on again. It was back to zero for all of this time. Uh, then we take a look at uh, reverse repurchase agreements. So this is where banks need uh, some high quality collateral. And so the treasury securities will be sold by the Federal Reserve with a, a, an agreement that the bank is going to repurchase these the next day, but they keep on rolling them over and rolling them over. So this is in temporary open market operations. So the banks, what's happening, the banks pay with their bank reserves to the Fed and the Fed gives them high quality collateral. Well, this is the global financial crisis of 2008. We're talking about $25 billion. And here we're talking about uh, $180 billion. Uh, is that, let's see what that peak is, if I can get it to stop. I can't get it to stop on that peak. Um, here we're talking about uh, half a trillion dollars, pretty much. And then, uh, you know, this is the pandemic. And then something started happening in uh, 2021, April of 2021. So we're talking two years ago, this crisis actually started happening and the Federal Reserve, the banks needed $2.2 trillion worth of high quality collateral that they needed from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve had accumulated too much of these treasuries. And uh, this shows up differently uh, on the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. Uh, this, if the um, Federal Reserve is taking these treasuries from, the, they're, they're selling these treasuries to the banks, the Federal Reserve is taking uh, bank reserves from them. And this is $2.2 trillion worth the, the, that the bank reserves should have gone down, but they didn't. And so it's, it's a, uh, I don't know all of the accounting that goes on behind this because it's it's difficult to figure out when you're just spending all this time looking at these charts, trying to reverse engineer this. This is uh, liquidity and credit facilities loans, primary credit. And so this is Federal Reserve loans. And you can see that the financial the global financial crisis of 2008 started brewing back in 2005. You can see there was a reason Banks started going to the Federal Reserve to take out some loans back in 2005, 2006. Then it starts getting a little bit more serious in 2007. And then suddenly, March of 2008, bam, what happened in March of 2008? So that, and then this is Lehman right here. But what happened in March of 2008? 
Bear Stearns collapses. This is This Day in History on the History Channel, March 16th, 2008. Bear Stearns collapses and is sold to J.P. Morgan Chase. And uh, the deal uh, was at $2 per share and that the Federal Reserve made loans to J.P. Morgan to facilitate the acquisition of uh, Bear Stearns at $2 per share. Well, let's take a look at Bear Stearns' price. They, they bought it at $2 per share. But, you know, you take a look. It was, it was up at $170. They basically got it at one penny on the dollar. It, was, it, it had fallen by 99% since its peak. So they got it at one penny on the dollar from its peak. And, uh, uh, and just, uh, it's interesting how JP Morgan keeps on gobbling these things up. JP Morgan buys Washington Mutual. Now, taking a look again at that, uh, the bank failures, here's Washington Mutual, 307 billion. So JP Morgan uh, buys Washington Mutual uh, for $1.9 billion and acquired $307 billion in assets and $188 billion in deposits. Deposits are the liabilities. So the assets here are almost twice as much as the liabilities, and J.P. Morgan acquired that for $1.9 billion. Then we've got Washington Mutual's price. So here's, here's the peak up at 45 bucks a share, and then J.P. Morgan acquires it somewhere down here. Uh, and the Federal Reserve, once again, facilitated this. Uh, there were loans involved. First Republic taken over by J.P. Morgan after regulators shut it down. And uh, what you see in here is that, um, again, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation agreed to share in the losses from the transaction and would take a hit of $13 billion dollars. Who pays for that? You do. Uh, and here is the price of First Republic Bank. This is their stock. And this is a one-year chart. So it's from May of 2022 to May of 2023. <laughs> and it's, it, I, I just, I can't help but laugh at how uh, JP Morgan is just like gobbling up the world and the Fed is facilitating all of this for them. Uh, banking sector faces tough times as Morgan Stanley becomes the latest to announce mass layoffs. And this is as of today. So <laughs> I would look for some time in the future to more, for Morgan Stanley to be merged into J.P. Morgan, of course. So uh, what was it that was causing all of this? This is total borrowings of depository institutions from the Federal Reserve. And you can see that in 2007, a crisis was brewing, uh, December 2007. This is Bear Stearns in March of 2008. That's Bear Stearns. It starts to settle down, and then we've got Lehman. And then here we have the pandemic. And then something started brewing uh, more than a year ago. This is March of 2022. We start seeing banks needing to borrow from the Federal Reserve. Something was going on, and then here is Silicon Valley, and then this chart is starting to go up again. Uh, and if we go back to assets, this is so, you know something started brewing back in 20, March of 2022, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, settled down a little bit, and then this is Silicon Valley. But this is going up again, and these will be um, updated. Uh, so this is as of April 26th. So um, uh, they'll be updated. And with First Republic, I would expect that uh, these borrowings are going to go up higher. So uh, this is the effective Fed funds rate, and this one is updated monthly. So we're not going to see this updated uh, for a little while. It was updated on May 1st. Uh, at 4.83%. We're now at 5.25. Uh, so this is federal funds effective rate. And then this is the effective federal funds rate. <laughs> they got a whole bunch of these. But 4.83 is uh, where that is at. And 
The thing about this, you know, they've, they're now up at five and a quarter. So it's up off the top of this chart. The chart goes up to five. What we're going to see here, this, if you take, this goes back, I can, I can get this to go back much further. And here we are going back the global financial crisis of 08 and so on. Uh, and if you take that and you go, you, if you use this really long-term one that goes back to 1954, uh, and then do a rate of change. So this is percent change from one year ago, and you can see that it you know that that nothing like this has ever happened. And ever since they started doing this crazy rate of change, that is now up 5,312 percent since one year ago. Uh, I've been saying for more than six months. It's been about nine months now that I've been saying. Uh, that the Fed is going to break something here. Well, they did. They broke, you know, so, uh, Silvergate, Signature, Silicon Valley, UBS, uh, not UBS, I'm sorry, Credit Suisse, UBS acquired Credit Suisse. Uh, but uh, it's these crazy rate changes that have done it. And then you look at the box that the Federal Reserve is in. This is the federal funds rate, uh, the federal funds effective rate going back to 1954. And we have the government current expenditures on interest payments. So how much are the interest payments costing us annually? And you can see with this rate change so fast with so much debt out there that we've gone from $600 billion of annual interest payments to $930 billion. I'm going to round that. But there's more. Let's take this chart and zoom up on, on just the, these recent rate changes. This is, so you've got the rate change, and you have the, which is the percent over here. And we're, not, we're now up at five and a quarter. And you've got the interest that, the, that we have to pay on the national debt. And you can see that the, the rate started going up in March of last year and they continued going up but this stops in the uh in uh government current q1 of 2023 so they have updated this q1 of 2023 so now it's at a trillion uh dollars uh q1 of 2023 this is fiscal q1 of 2023 when it it started uh q4 of 2022 was in October. That's when Q4 was reported. Uh, so Q1 of 2023 is actually what we spent through December. Uh, and so what you're seeing uh, is the Fed funds rate was up to 4.33. Now we're up to 5.25. Uh, we keep on rolling over all of the old debt and rolling it into new higher interest debt the average is that there's about five and a quarter, uh, every five and a quarter years, the U.S. government has to completely refinance the national debt. The $31 trillion that we owe has to be completely rolled over about every five years. But they're having treasury auctions every single day. So some of that debt is coming due. They have to issue brand new debt to replace the matured debt. And when they do, it's at these interest rates. And so we don't even know you know, that you've got uh, one, two, three more months of uh, debt that has been rolled over at far higher rates. And now it's at five. So this is already, um, let me see, we were at 852. Now we're at 928. So we're basically at, uh, we, we've already surpassed $1 trillion per year due. And one of the big problems is, the, when they make a, a budget, there's the there's the fiscal deficit, which is the real deficit, and then there's the budget deficit. And the budget deficit is the projection when they make a budget for the next year of how much more they're going to spend us into a hole, how much more they're going to spend than what our income is going to be. And this year they're planning on 1.4 trillion, but this isn't part of the calculation. There's going to be an extra trillion of of uh, of uh, debt on the uh, national uh, of 
payments on the interest due on the national debt that they've got to come up with. And so look for the uh, this coming year's budget deficit to be in the twos or three trillion dollar area because they also never plan on a recession in the, when they're making these budget deficit, these budget projections. And so they're planning on 1.4, but they're going to have less tax revenues because of a recession. They're going to do emergency spending because of a recession. And uh, they're going to have, uh, you know, they, they were planning on $600 billion of interest payments, but they're gonna have about $1.2 trillion of interest payments, about 600 billion more than they thought. So right there, just that will take the budget deficit, that, that the actual budget deficit that's going to happen uh, for 2023, uh, from their projected 1.4 trillion to over 2 trillion, just with this. So with the recession that is coming, and by the way, the Fed, uh, oh, in that, um, you know what? I'm gonna go back to it. In the, uh, the Zero Hedge article, wherever that was, Fed rates, image, the, it was here. Uh, okay, in here, uh, they say that the Fed, ah, the Fed's preferred recession rate spread indicator, the three month over the 18 month forward is now flashing red, implying a 94% probability of a recession within the next year. 94%, that's, that's pretty high. So uh, back to the story here, the, uh, the payments. And I, I want to go back to the, the JP Morgan being able to gobble up Washington Mutual Bank in a shotgun wedding that, uh, where they got to accumulate all of these assets uh, at pennies on the dollar. And then uh, First Republic and Silicon Valley Bank. And then, uh, so I want to leave you with this. Uh, banks, when they make profits, my profits, Banks, when they lose currency, not money, our losses. And lastly, that banks, that's all, folks, gold. I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. At goldsilver.com, we have a price match guarantee, free shipping, global storage options, and phenomenal customer service. Thanks for making goldsilver.com your bullion dealer.